He's a national speaker, host of Real Talk with Michael McFadden right here on BTR, and now an author. One of the big reasons I want to bring him on is so we can chat about this upcoming book that's coming out. So without further ado, please welcome Mr. Michael McFadden. Michael, are you there? Yes, sir. What's up? What's going on, sir? Man, you put out so much great information, Mr. Clark, man, that um, it's just very informative and powerful information as far as the workshops that you do, you know, your, your words of the day. I'm, I'm going to see if I can sneak that word in somehow. I might, have to just, I might have to just resort to my old school ways and, you know, in elementary school the way I used to do it if I can't figure a way to put it in there. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's how I have You know, sometimes you make a great situation out of bad. No, it is my pleasure, man. And and thank you for being the first guest of 2011 season. You know, you're setting the tone. You're the barometer of how this season is going to go for uh, the conversation. And it is a pleasure, an absolute pleasure to have you on. So we're going to jump right in, sir. So, Mike, 96 shows, (laughs) bruh. Are you serious? (laughs) I know, right? I'm still scratching sir, my head with Sir, I have 13. I, I feel tired. I'm tired already. 13 shows. You got 96 in the hopper. How does that make you feel? I, I, you know what? I think I think that's, uh, th- that defines resiliency, man, because, you know, when we debuted the show, I think it was back in August of 2009, I think it was, it was just like, okay, let, let's see if it works. Um, you know, Blog Talk Radio has this magnificent tool out there for everybody to to have their voices heard. And and I think that when I was given the opportunity or it was recommended, it it actually came about, Clark, uh, a friend of mine recommended that I do it from Facebook because I was able to create, you know, a little dialogue just from the social networking aspect. And he was like, man, you need to take it to radio. And I had a couple of friends that were already on the BTR uh, circuit, like my man James Costin, uh, Lamar Campbell uh, that was doing the show, and I, I actually did their show one day, and, and, and it just all fell in line. Um, you know, we did that first show. It was a um, it was a Thursday show, and, and if you don't mind me just going back a little bit, you know, when he when he gave me the idea to do the show, I, I did a little research on BTR, and uh, when I told my wife I was considering doing it, she you know she was like, yeah, do your thing. And I was sitting there, okay, I, I was saying to myself, okay, I'll schedule it. I'll do a show in 60 days because I want to get everything together. And then next thing you know, I started saying, well, I'll do it in 30 days. And then I got so anxious, I was like, you know what, I'll do it Thursday at 630. I just scheduled it just <laughs> like that. I just said, just, just get it out the way. And, and that first show, Clock, was probably one of the worst shows ever that any blog talk radio host uh, has done since <laughs> oh, they've wow. been on the air. <laughs> wow. Wow. Been there, done that. Yeah, I mean, we did some, you know, we we did some promotions, and even still today, the promotions that that I do is just, you know, through social networking. But you know, I didn't realize at the time that you, you know, you would only have X amount of callers on the line, and you know, I, I scheduled to have two guests on the on the show that day, and one of the guests couldn't get in because the lines were filled up already. It, it just it just went crazy, mm. man. And, and, uh, you know, I, after the show, I, I just said to myself, okay, next Thursday we're going to get up and do it again. But that, that, that feeling that I had inside of me that I can't, I can't go out like this. I can't have people thinking that the show wasn't right. So that next morning, Clark, I woke up on that Friday and scheduled another show for that Friday. And what I did was I just did it kind of just secretively. You know what I'm saying? I didn't do a lot of advertisement right. for it. And I just wanted to call my, my second guest and say, you know, I said, hey, Paul, hey, man, come on, let, let's do this interview with you, but I'm not going to tell anybody that we're doing it. I just wanted to be able to do it at a, in a comfortable state. And then, like you said, man, 90 shows down, man, it's just like it's like second nature, man. I can't, you know, I still get I still get the uh, little butterflies when I hear the lady do the countdown, you know, your show was called in five <laughs> seconds. You know, I still have that little antsy feeling in me, man, but once, you know, once that music gets to going and, and uh, you know, you're live, man, it's showtime. So, you know, it, it's just a blessing to have this, uh, this tool of, of BTR. And, and shout out to everybody out there that, that does blog talk radio shows because we, you know, we, we, we love doing what we do just because it's not because of a check or anything like that. It, it's because we, we're, we're able to give people opportunities to be heard. Absolutely. A voice to be heard that wasn't out there five, ten years ago. Absolutely. And we mm-hmm. just upgraded ourselves. So, 
you know, I'm excited about, you know, taking it up a notch myself. Now, what's the mm-hmm. show's mantra? What's what what's what is if you could if you could in a couple of words, what could you tell the listeners that they will get out of it? What's the mantra of the show? You you know what, Clark? The the initial the initial um, you know format for the show was to give others an opportunity. I always uh, define the word luck as being prepared when you get that opportunity, whatever that opportunity is. And, and what I saw and what I found is that there are a lot of there are a lot of us out there, you know, not you know not youngsters, but there are a lot of people out there that are, that that are grinding like yourself with the book Survive Three Sixty Five, like um, you know, artists that are that are rappers or singers or motivational speakers or anyone that has a craft or a product that they're looking to sell. So what I say I would do with this show is that I will give. Uh, you know, these hustlers out here, the opportunity to, to come and do a radio show. And, and, you know, it's it's a it's a real radio show because, one, we're, we're not just based out of Atlanta. Even though I broadcast out of Potter Spring, you know how it is, Clark. Our, our airways are worldwide because anybody can listen to us. So what I, mm. what I said was with this tool right here that we were able to give people an opportunity, for instance, with, with someone, uh, an author that has never – promoted his or her book before, have never been on the radio before, Real Talk is that opportunity where I can tell my guests, hey, come on here, and why don't you get, you know, you'll get some coaching. You'll get an opportunity to do a real interview where you can have your family call in and listen. You can have your friends call in and listen. And then on the flip side, when you get that call from Oprah Winfrey or, you know, some of the big, mm. big radio stations out there, you know, you get a call from Gail King and says, you know, Hey Clark, I want I want to debut your book on our show this week. You know, can you make it? What you can do is you can go back and remember. Okay, I was on Real Talk with Michael McFadden. I was on the Beautiful Butterfly Show. I've done it. So you're not as nervous. You're prepared. Right. And that's what Real Talk is. It, it, it gets you prepared for when that next level hits you. <laughs> 